all done cubing our pot pie sirloin there as you can see um it's it's a good amount it's a good amount maybe maybe a cup maybe a cup if even that and uh you can definitely double that you can half that whatever your needs may be this is just a couple tablespoons of alfalfa flour a little salt and pepper and a few dashes of Mrs. Dash. Okay, just a little bit there. We're gonna take our seasoning blend, shake it up. Okay, just take this as it is, it's already pretty moist, and just put it in the bag there. Okay, and then just start shaking. Start shaking. Just hold it. Okay, once that's good and coated, then go ahead and take them out of, just dust them off a little bit and place in your bowl. Just take that excess flour off. Make sure you see that. Oh, that's a little bit better, yeah. Shake that off. All right. Continue getting those all out of the bag. Okay, take your Dutch oven, cast iron skillet, uh, frying pan, whatever you have, and put a little oil in it. A little, probably maybe, uh, maybe two tablespoons, if even that. Yeah. And we're, today we're just using some safflower oil. Let that heat up. Remember, we've dusted our, there you go, we've dusted our little sirloin tips there, and uh, we're just going to wait until the oil is heated. Now, the reason we're doing this is to lock in that flavor just a little bit, add a little crust, and if you're pressed for time, you really don't. You can skip this step and throw it all in the crock pot, and it'll be ready, but uh, I'm off today. I do work 40 hours a week, so I'm always looking for good shortcuts. And so this one, I'm off today, and we're going to take our time and make it just a little bit better. All right. Okay, our pot is ready. Okay, we're going to add this a little bit of time. And I am trying this turtle again. Remember from the last video. That I got us some spurtles for Christmas and it didn't do so good on the pancake. So let's see about uh, just moving our uh, meat around. Let's try that. Right. We're not going to cook this too long just to get brown. So watch it really quick. Just a few seconds on each side. Just until you get that nice crust on the bottom. You see that getting brown already. pieces are golden in color. And if you are still pink, that's okay because we're going to slow cook that. All right, we're done. Okay, I've got my slow cooker plugged in. It's on. We're going to scoop out the meat. There's not a lot of oil in here, so we're just going to scoop this out. Okay, and just add it to our slow cooker. And remember, this is going to be our pot pie. 
We're going to stew some of this. Stew. That just means slow cook. We're going to slow cook some of this meat just to get it hot enough, a little tender. Can get all of that in there. And you see those bits? We can make gravy on it, but we just uh, we just don't have a lot of time. <laughs> so, actually, we just want to need a shortcut. So we're going to use just a jarred gravy and add that to it. These gravies are really fast and easy. They're quick when you don't have a lot of time. Or if you just want a really easy shortcut. Let's add one jar of the gravy. And I always like to add a little water to this. Just to get all the good stuff out. We don't want to waste any of that. Let's mix that up. Using that squirtle again. Oh, goodness. That's sort of a noisy squirtle, isn't it? Okay. And we're just going to put a lid on it. Now, this is going to slow cook probably for a couple of hours. And then what we'll do, we have uh, frozen mixed veggies. And we're going to save a little time with those and uh, we're going to put this all together and we'll come back and make our pot pie. Be right back. All right, we're going to make our pot pie. And we have just, these are two uh, just pre-made pie crusts left over from the holidays. I didn't get around uh, to making that extra pie. So we're just going to go ahead and make pot pie out of it. And these are fast really quick. Let's go ahead and take one out of the container and roll it. Okay, first I'm going to take some, first I'm going to take some little spray just so it doesn't stick and comes out of the oven quickly and easily without sticking. All right, so just unroll it. I'm using my square dish just to make it a little easier. Okay, oops. And if it tears, don't worry about it. See, I've got a tear right there. I'm just going to press it together. Okay. Okay, we've got the bottom. Let me go ahead and make the uh, beef pot pie mixture and we'll be right back. Here's our sirloin tips and gravy. It's all nice and done. To that, we are going to add some mixed vegetables. We got about a cup here. And just add it to taste. I think I want mine a little bit more vegetably. So I'm going to add a little bit more, I think. I'm going to add a little bit more vegetables. And these are just your mixed frozen vegetables. Just in your grocer's freezer. Really quick. Now these are frozen, so what's going to happen when I add them to my pot pie is that they're going to bake nicely and still remain fresh and give you that little crunch. Okay, that is perfect for my pot pie. All right, I'm going to pour it in. All right.
got our pie crust ready to go and this is our beef pot pie mixture and if you saw the other videos we made that sirloin tips and we slow cooked it with some gravy and just added in some frozen vegetables Pour that all in. Scraping the sides with your spatula. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay, that looks perfect. I'm gonna get. Remember, this is the top half of the other pie crust. All you do is you can just gotta roll it. See, it has a little seam there. If you have the time, go ahead and make your own pie crust. But if you're a working woman like me <laughs> and the rest of my family, then uh, go ahead and we can cut a little few corners there. Okay, just tuck it in just like that. Just go to the side. This is really quick and easy. I'm going to roll it down. Take a little fork and pinch it. Just gonna take a fork and pinch it there at the sides. Now remember, don't forget to poke some holes in it to let the steam escape. good. I'm going to get an egg uh, just so we can do a little top off of an egg wash and then we're ready to bake. Okay, turn on your oven to about 350. All right, get your egg. Just crack it right there. And yes, I did crack it with one hand. Little trick grandma taught me. Years. Keep practicing, you'll get it. <laughs> okay. All right, we're just going to whisk one egg here. What this is going to do is it's going to give it that gloss and sheen that you see so many baked goods have. And these right here, you can get these at the Dollar Tree. Um, they're just a rubberized uh, barbecue spreader, egg wash spreader. <laughs> they are really nice. My dad used to use the paint, uh, paint brushes. Do y'all remember that? Seeing your dads and grandpa using the paint brushes. <laughs> and you'd get, when they would start getting old, you'd get bristles and then your hamburgers. You're like, Dad! So this was a much better invention than uh, those old paint bristles. Okay, just lightly coat it there, trying to get the crust. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to cover it with foil, and then we're going to bake it about 45 minutes. We are going to put our Popeye in the oven 350 for about 45 minutes. 
Okay, you notice that I put some foil strips on it, and that was just to prevent the crust from getting overdone. And all I did was take that foil and cut it into four pieces. That's all I did. All right, I think it's done. We'll take it out now. All right, it is all done. I think I'm going to take a little butter and go around the crust. Other than that, it is good. We're going to let this set for about 5-10 minutes, let it cool off, and then we're going to have dinner. Enjoy! I've cut it into four equal pieces here. It's still kind of hot and steamy. So now we're going to lift it out. Oops. Oh, that's hot. Oops. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's hot. All right, we're ready to eat. 